Uh, a very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers uh, and sisters uh, in Christ. We thank our Lord for giving us the opportunity to study his wonderful words of life. So last week we studied an uh, important subject about Daniel, the second chapter and seventh chapter, where we came to know that uh, God's kingdom shall be established visibly on this earth as all the other four kingdoms were on the earth. So similarly, the fifth universal empire, the kingdom of Christ also shall be on earth. Therefore, Jesus starts us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Okay, and uh, the same class was revised by Brother Gopal in Nepali language on Saturday also. I hope uh, it is very clear uh, to everybody. Uh, therefore, uh today we're going to see a important uh you see a subject where uh, dear brethren uh, we can uh, see that uh, as soon as we entered in this uh, decade uh, 2020 2021 we witnessed uh, a very drastic uh, change uh, in the world's environment and uh, there was a severe uh, pandemic uh, that uh, hit uh, the entire world, uh, not sparing uh, anybody in the world. Uh, the COVID, because of which uh, there was a very huge uh, crash in the stock market. Many of them lost their wealth. Nobody had uh, jobs. They had to survive for the life. So many people were working in different places, left everything and went to their hometown. There wasn't sufficient uh, adequate uh, transportation and uh, not even sufficient uh, money to travel, not even sufficient resources. Uh, so many people, dear brethren, they starved. Uh, and many people still. Uh, they died. So many people lost their parents, their brethren, and so many were made homeless. Their brethren, seeing the small kids uh, who were suffering without proper uh, love, proper care, proper affection, not even uh, proper uh, humanity. They're just allowed to die. Seeing all these conditions uh, in this world, everybody in this world has a question in their mind. Why, why, why? Why God doesn't stop these things? Why is he permitting so much of suffering, sorrow in this world? Some people fed up of because of that severe uh, you see, difficulties, they question the Lord. Lord, I credit to you so much. I'm uh, putting tears every day. Why don't you see my tears? Why don't you hear my prayers? That is uh, the question among everybody in this world. Why there is uh, so many differences in the society? Many people are so much fed up of the life uh, at the end of life in suicide. They don't want to live in this world. Uh, they don't want life at all. They're fed up of so much of evil. Uh, imagine a person, a main person in the family who is uh, earning uh, the breadwinner in the family. If he dies, the question comes to the mind, why? Why not? Why this thing happened to us? Imagine there's the only son in the family, and suddenly if that son passes away, the parents put a question, Lord, what did my son do? Why have we taken him? What wrong did he do? What evil did he do? Why, Lord, why? Dear brother, so many people who lost their loved ones. 
so many people have lo lost their family, parents, and all their living uh, the same question, why, why, why? Why there is difference in the society? Why somebody who is unrighteous, who is living wealthy? Why there is uh, somebody who is, uh, even after a lot of sufferings, a uh, lot of uh, sincerity, he has to suffer in this world. Why there is difference between the rich and the poor? Why somebody is made rich, somebody is made poor? Why some have a lot of food to eat? Some people don't have basic food also, dear brethren. Some people have everything for the education. Some people don't have their basic amenities in their life. Why there is difference, dear brethren? This question naturally comes and passes everybody in this world. I'm sure definitely this question would have come across your mind also. Dear brethren, the Bible says that we are all of one family. And one family of God. Then why there is a difference in the family? Let us read Ephesians 3.15. Ephesians 3.15. Anybody can read. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. See, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So we are the entire family of God. The so why there is different. Why is someone fair? Why is someone dark? Why is someone rich? Why is someone is poor? Why everyone has everything? Why is some people have nothing? Why there is differences, dear brethren? Imagine if we have a family and if we have two sons, will we make one of the sons as a very rich engineer or a doctor and make other son as a poor beggar? No. Dear brethren, Jesus compared, you see, our parents to our heavenly father. He says, if somebody of your children come and ask for a fish, which of your parents will give a serpent? Dear brethren, we being evil know what good to give to our children. Doesn't our Heavenly Father know what good he has to give to the entire mankind? Matthew 7, chapter 9 to 11. Then why this difference? Why, why, dear brethren, why the people of this world are uh, begging from God, uh, asking for good from God? But why a lot of sufferings? Uh, dear brethren, will we make uh, such a difference in our family? No, dear brethren, why there is difference in God's family? Many people, when we ask this question, why so much of evil, they simply tell that it is not God. It is Satan. It is Satan, the devil, who is doing all these things. Okay, if Satan, the devil, is the one who is doing all these things, what is God doing? Who is more powerful? Is Jesus more powerful or is the devil more powerful? The Bible says that Satan will be bound for a thousand years. God can bind him for a thousand years. Why has he allowed him now? If he tell like this, the people will tell, no, no, it is actually God only who is doing good and evil. God only does evil, God only does good, it seems. Sir. Dear brethren, does God have to do with the evil? Does God do evil? Let us read Psalms 5, chapter 4, verse 4. Psalms 5, 4. Muna, sister, can you read? For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell in uh, dwell uh, with thee. See, God doesn't have pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell. If evil never dwells, God doesn't have pleasure in wickedness. Then why? 
Why so much of evil, dear brethren? Why? Why? Again the question comes, why the devil is permitted to do all these things? Dear brethren, you see, many people who don't get the answer, you see, huh? they tell uh, that uh, various reasons for that one. Dear brethren, Similarly, there was one person in this world, you see, who mm -hmm. sought an answer for this question. You know, he was Gautam Buddha. Gautam Buddha, his name is actually Siddhartha. Siddhartha Gautam, you see, he was the only son of a very rich emperor. And his father did not want his son to have any worries he did not want his son to go into world and know the sufferings of this world. So he was nurtured only in the palace. And suddenly once one day, when his uh, father was out, he decided to go to his empire, you see, and see how his people are living. When he went out, he saw that the people are suffering. He saw a old man who could not walk. He saw a very, very old man with a hatchback who could not straight, who could not stand straight. He saw a beggar begging for food. He saw a person, you see, they are crying because they are carrying the dead body. He saw many houses with tears and sufferings. Ultimately, when he came to the palace, when he met his father, he asked him, Father, why? Why the people are suffering while I am living luxuriously? Why so much of evil? Why so much of pain for them? Please answer my question. But... His father could not answer his question. He told, go and get uh, one grain of rice uh, from a house in which there is no tears. Then I'll surely answer your uh, question. So he went out. Went out with a begging bowl. I went out in each and every house in his uh, kingdom. He begged for one grain of rice. but Nobody could give it. Because they were suffering, 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 pain, tears in all the houses. So his question was not answered. He left the palace and uh, sat at the people tree seeking the answer for it. But did he get the answer? No. He did not get the answer, dear brother. This answer we are going to see today from the Bible. Many people, those who don't get the answers, come to the conclusion that there is no God at all. This is all our imagination, being a good devil and all these things and all. This is all our imagination. But dear brethren, we can't come to such a conclusion because uh, the universe is beautifully created. If it is created wonderfully, then surely there must be a creator for it. Nothing would have happened magically. What is the answer for this one? Dear brethren, originally when God created Adam, the first man of this earth, he created him in his own image. And in his own likeness, last week we studied now, Genesis 126, and gave him to be the king of this earth, have dominion over the fowls of the air and the cattle and the beast of the field. So he was king of this earth, dear brethren. He had given the entire kingship of this entire earth. So God created man in his own image. Genesis 126, sir. What is the meaning of image, God's image in the Bible? Does it mean that as God is, similarly did he create uh, man in the same way? You see, does man look like God? No, dear brother, no. And what is the meaning of uh, image of God? Let us see what Jesus tells in John 4.24. John 4.24. Anu Magara, sister, can you read John 4.24? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in 
spirit and in truth very good so god is a spirit he is not a fleshly human being he is a spirit being so he doesn't have a body like us he doesn't have physical features like us that means what is the meaning of image of god then image of god means the character all the characters which god has was in adam when he was created the main character was a free will god has his will which he can use it whichever way he wants he is not a robot in the same image god created adam having a free will if he wanted to choose good he could have chosen good if he wanted to choose evil he could have chosen evil in such a quality in such a character was adam created a brain adam was not created like a robot or a machine you see he was created as a free will moral agent dear brethren after creating adam god created eve taking the you see the rib of adam how how was it possible today we have cloning process no same way god actually cloned from adam mother eve you see dear brethren so all the creation of god is perfect you see the bible says that uh, all the works of god are perfect let us read that verse in deuteronomy 32:4 deuteronomy 32:4 kamal rana magar sister can you read kamal rana sister okay joel brother can you read uh, okay kamal sister kamal sister please read kathi bhaneko bujhena gopal bhanna da vyavastha 32 ko 4 english mai vyavastha hmm vyavastha 32 ko 4 Okay, so or else somebody can read it in English. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways. Ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. See, all his works is perfect. Whatever God has created, it is perfect. Even Lucifer, when he was created, how was he created? Ah, he was created perfect. Ah. How is Lucifer to look at? Many people think that uh, Lucifer is having, uh, you see, huh? uh, what uh, four uh, canine teeth? He's having uh, eyes full of red, and if you open his mouth, only fire is coming like a dragon. He has uh, two horns on his head. He has sharp nails and have a big tail. He is like the devil that is shown in a comic picture, no? Everybody think that uh, devil is such a way. So what does the Bible say? Let us read Ezekiel twenty-eight, brother. Ezekiel twenty-eight, verse twelve uh, and thirteen. Ezekiel twenty-eight, twelve and thirteen. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Don't read from the screen. Open the Bible and read. That this is a. Ezekiel twenty-eight, twelve and thirteen. Son of man, take off a lamentation upon the king of Tyre's, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest of the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of, uh, of God. Every precious stone was the thigh, covering the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbonyl, and gold, 
workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in three in the day thou was created. Very good. So it says, uh, Son of man, take up a lamentation unto the king of Tyrus. Uh, and see, it says, uh, those silistabas, the sum full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Verse 13, it says, though has been in the garden of Eden. Now imagine, when did the king of Tyrus be in garden of Eden? Huh? Was king Tyrus in Eden? Garden of Eden? No. No. Who was in the garden of Eden? Read verse 14, brother. Read verse 14. Hmm. Thou art the anointed cherub. The ah, okay, brother. Thou art the anointed cherub. That means uh, is King uh, Tyrus a cherub? Is he an angel? Was he in Garden of Eden? No. So then, which is the angel that was in the Garden of Eden? If you see it, then it was Lucifer. Lucifer. What does the Bible say? He is not uh, very, you see, uh, dark or black in color to look at. Uh, what does the Bible say? In verse 12 it says, He is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Dear brethren, Lucifer is so beautiful that if a compassion stands before us, he immediately will fall prostrate to him thinking that he is God. You see, such is the Bible description of a Lucifer, he was perfect in beauty, full in wisdom. He had so many, you see, huh? beautiful characters in him. Therefore, the Bible also says, Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians 11 14. Brother. Gopal, brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 11 14? And no marble, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, see, Satan himself is transformed into a Angel of light. So, Satan, when he appears, how does it come? He doesn't come like a devil, but he comes like an angel of light, it seems. Therefore, the word Lucifer in the Bible means, you see, morning star. Uh, let us read, you see, in Isaiah 14, 12, brother. Isaiah 14, 12, brother. Can somebody read? Isaiah 14, 12. Isaiah 14, 12, brother. How art thou fallen from the from one thing, Lucifer, son of the morning? Art thou cut down to be to the ground, which didst waken the nations? Ah, how art thou fallen, O Lucifer? <laughs> Lucifer means what? Uh, son of the morning. So the word Lucifer actually means son of the morning. So what do you mean by it, uh, son of the morning? Means early in the morning, there is a star that shines brightly in the sky. Seems, uh, that is actually a planet Jupiter. That is called as morning star. Now this name is given to Lucifer. Why? Because that shows Lucifer was the early creation of God. Okay. Lucifer is called as morning star. Do we have any other morning star in the Bible? Do you know anybody who is called as morning star in the Bible? Anybody who can answer? Anil. Uh, ah, very good, Munar star. Jesus. Uh, uh, read Revelation 22 16. Revelation 22 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you this thing in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Hmm. So Jesus is also the morning star, but he's a bright morning star. Then in the Bible, there are two morning stars. Okay. Where the two morning stars together somewhere? Eh? With the two morning stars uh, together somewhere? Yes, they were together. When the creative work was being happening on this earth, he was good and he was with Jesus. Let us read Job 38 6, brother. Job 38, 6. Uh, Kamal, brother, Kamal, sister, 
ओके अनिल ब्रदर साजन ब्रदर रीड वेयर अपॉन आर द फाउंडेशन देयर ऑफ फैशन और हु लेड द कॉर्नर स्टोन देयर ऑफ व्हेन द मॉर्निंग स्टार सैंग टुगेदर द एंड ऑल द सॉन्ग्स ऑफ गॉड शाउटेड फॉर जॉय व्हेन द मॉर्निंग स्टार्स स्टार नॉट स्टार्स सैंग टुगेदर डियर ब्रदरन सो द टू मॉर्निंग स्टार्स वेयर देयर when the creative work upon the earth was being done so he was good until the creative work was happening so god created uh, lucifer and uh, jesus as uh, both the morning stars and they were present when the creative work happened uh, they were then and god created this perfect uh, man adam and eve and gave him the entire uh, dominion of this earth uh, but uh, when he god gave the entire dominion made them as uh, king and queen of this earth god had never tested him that uh, how he would remain faithful to god or not and just to check that faithfulness god placed a small test in the garden of eden what is that one genesis 217 says now you may freely eat of all the trees in the garden of eden but uh, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil so you shall not eat in the day you eat thereof you shall surely die dear brethren you see eh that was a test uh, to prove how adam would remain faithful to god or not like for example imagine if you join any company for a work will the company owner on the day of you joining you large sum of amount to go and deposit in the bank no he won't give why because your faithfulness is not attested whether you will remain faithful or not until you are tested nobody puts the responsibility upon you but here god without testing adam had put the entire kingship upon him so god wanted to see whether if you would remain faithful or not that is the reason god placed this tree in the garden of eden and upon this uh, creation of adam and eve lucifer placed as a guardian angel lucifer was placed in garden of eden as a guardian angel let us read ezekiel 28:14 brother ezekiel 28:14 is given there can somebody read ezekiel 28:14 thou art the anointed uh cherub or cherub that cover oh. and i have set the so thou thou wast upon the holy mountain of god ah sister it says walk, do, walk. do art the anointed cherub anointed cherub means what appointed angel as a guardian angel a angel to give protection to man god sent lucifer so to protect them not that uh, they would fall uh, into sin dear brother but instead of protecting them lucifer drew them to sin how dear brother lucifer was uh, the morning star instead of making him the king of this earth uh, god had made adam and eve the king of this earth and made him to be watchman over them this created so much of trouble in uh, lucifer's mind uh, that he did not want to humble to such a extent uh, to be a watchman and uh, that is the time that he decided in his mind that uh, if somehow he could deceive adam and eve and take their control instead of them being the king of this earth he can become the king of this earth you see dear brethren that is how he deceived eve how like for example imagine if you are a manager of the company you will be in a very good position and the very eh, next day imagine your boss comes and tells no from tomorrow you are not going to be the manager but you going to work as a watchman Huh? what will happen to us can we humble to such extent to work as a watchman no dear brethren immediately 
thoughts come to our mind. Negative thoughts come to our mind. Every day seeing our boss, what will happen? You see, all evil thoughts will come to our mind. We will think, somehow we should do something for this uh, boss who has given me such a position and uh, we'll try to harm him. Isn't it the same way Lucifer thought uh, to be like God? That is the time that Lucifer became Satan. Let us read Isaiah 14, chapter 13 to 14, brother. Isaiah 13, 14, chapter 13 to 14. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? For thou hast said in, in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. In the sight of the Lord, I will ascend above the heights of cloud. I will be like the most high. Mm, that is the time that uh, he decided and thought in his heart uh, that I am going to be like God. Now, how did he put it into action? How did he decide to be like God? Is uh, Somehow he wanted to control Adam and Eve. So he saw he was a weaker vessel. And he deceived Eve through the serpent. How did he deceive Eve? Huh? We see in the Bible that the serpent spoke to you. Does the serpent speak? No. Actually, the serpent did not speak. But the word, but the actions done by the serpent was like a speech to Eve. What Lucifer would have done? He would have made the serpent to eat that fruit. You see? Huh? The serpent would have ate the forbidden fruit. And uh, immediately a thought would have crossed uh, Eve's mind. Huh? God has said, you shall not eat that fruit. Uh, and uh, if you eat, you shall surely die. You see, the thought would have crossed uh, Mother Eve. For this, immediately Lucifer would have given, you shall surely not die. You will not die, don't worry. The serpent is eating the fruit and living alive. So similarly, even if you eat the fruit, uh, you won't die. Then again, immediately, a thought again would have come. Okay, then, huh? if you, uh, uh, we don't die, if you're not going to die, then why did God tell not to eat? Uh, correct, huh? Huh? This thought would have come. For this, Lucifer would have replied, no, no, God fears that you should be like God's. Uh, you'll become like God's. That is the reason God is forbidding you to eat. Uh. Dear brethren, this is how Huh? Lucifer deceived you to eat forbidden fruit. Just how? By putting a question mark, isn't it? Huh? Now, how is the question mark? It is same like a serpent's food. Why? Because the first question in the Bible came through the serpent. Therefore, even today, we use the question mark as a serpent's food, dear brethren. See, this is given in the Bible. Dear brethren, eh? thus uh, Lucifer deceived Eve and Eve gave this forbidden fruit uh, to Adam. And Adam ate the fruit. Uh, you see, eh? what does the Bible say? Eh? Did Adam know that he would die? Did uh, Lucifer deceive Adam? What does the Bible say? Let us read 1 Timothy 2.14. 1 Timothy 2.14, brother. 1 Timothy 2.14. Mm. And Adam was deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Ah, Adam was not deceived. Adam knew very clearly that if he is going to eat the fruit, he will surely die. Then what did he eat? He was actually committing suicide. He was actually ready to die. Why? Because he knew very well that Eva had uh, ate the uh, forbidden fruit and now she is going to die. And uh, if she is going to die, what about me? I will leave alone. He did not want to leave alone, dear brother. And moreover, there was only one girl in uh, Garden of Eden, that is Eve. If she is gone, I will become alone. What is about, uh, what about my condition? Therefore, Adam ate the uh, fruit to die along with Eve. Dear brethren, today we have heard and we hear so many love stories 
Romeo Juliet, uh, Lena Mojno, Hir Mojna. There so many stories. Uh, huh? Even after having a lot of girls in this world, they die for the same girl. How foolish. Uh. But what could Adam do? Poor Adam. He did not have anybody. He had only Eve. Therefore, he was not ready to lose her. Therefore, he ate the forbidden fruit. Once uh, the, he, they ate the forbidden fruit, what did God do? God cast them out of the garden of Eden into the unfinished earth. God said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Let us read Genesis 3.17. Sajan brother, can you read Genesis 3.17? Sajan brother, you there? Can you read Genesis 3.17? Sajan brother. Okay, Anil Buddha, can you read Genesis 3.17? And unto Adam he said, Because thou, <coughs> thou hast hearkened unto the one wise of thy wise of wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded the saying thou uh, shall not eat of it, cursed the ground for the sake. In sort of salt, thou eat it all the days of the thy life. Ah, cursed is the ground for thy sake. You shall eat by the sweat of thy bro. So he was cursed and he was sent into the unfinished earth. Therefore, today, so many people are dying uh, in various ways, uh, sin, uh, sickness, uh, sorrow, pain, accident, uh, murder. Why all these things? Uh, it is because of one sin in this world. Dear brethren, but uh, actually if you see, there are more people who are dying, uh, you see, uh, in, uh, huh? in war than people who are dying in natural disasters. You see, like for example, you know Osama Bin Laden? Osama Bin Laden actually was once an American James Bond. You see, but because of a small misunderstanding, what did you do? He revolted uh, against uh, the Americans, uh, you see, dear brethren, and targeted the Americans, uh, dear brethren. Therefore, uh, small words, why? You see, dear brethren, and uh, there's a lot of earthquake today. Why? Because of excess mining. Why do the do mining? Because of selfishness, greediness. You see? And what will happen? The soil will become loose. Immediately, earthquake happens. Uh, then uh, there is a flood, uh, you see, in the mountain areas. Why? When rain comes, all the water gushes into the city in a form of flood. Why? Because of deforestation. If you start cutting all the trees in the forest area, what will happen? Dear brethren, automatically when the rain comes, all the water, you see, flows into the city in a form of a flood. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, uh, this is all because of man's selfishness. Therefore, the Bible says in Isaiah 66, 1, that uh, heaven is my throne and the uh, earth is my footstool. So let us read Isaiah 66 1. Joel brother, can you read Isaiah 66 1? Thus said the Lord, the heaven, my heaven, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my foot footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? See? Uh, heaven is my throne, earth is the footstool. What does it mean? Does it mean that uh, God is literally sitting in heaven putting his uh, Feet on the earth, no, dear brethren. Footstool in the Bible means a place of learning. In the olden days, the teacher or the guru is to sit like this uh, upon the, you see, a chair or a, you see, a place, and at their feet uh, there should be be a small table to rest their uh, feet. And all the disciples used to sit on the floor near his feet. And that place was called as, a, you see, dear brethren, as footstool in the Bible. 
that place they should tell that uh, i learned at this person's feet you see that is read i acts 22 3 acts 22 3 uh munna sister can you read acts 22 3 I am barely a man who is a who is a Mazuri, born in a terrace, a city in Cilicia, Cilicia. It brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous to our God, as ye all are this day. Oh, Apostle Paul learned at the feet of Gamaliel. What does it mean? Did he literally sit at his feet and learn? No. That means that was uh, his place of learning. So similarly, when God says that uh, heaven is my throne, earth is a foothold, it means uh, earth is a place of learning. Okay. Now how can you teach some, somebody something? There are actually four ways to teach somebody something. The first method is intuition. That means nobody has to tell you which is good, which is bad. Automatically, this knowledge is within themselves. This intuition method is only applicable to God. You see, he has a free will moral agent. He exactly knows which is good and which is bad. You see, he can differentiate it. But we? No. So, no need to tell this is evil, this is good. Automatically, this knowledge is within themselves. This is applicable only to our God. Okay. Second is advice. Advice means what? God had told Adam not to eat the forbidden fruit. If you eat the forbidden fruit, in the same day, you shall die. But it, uh, Adam ate and died. So advice was there, but advice did not work out. Uh, advice was there by God in Ghana Fidan. But did it work out? No. Third one was observation. Adam did not have anybody else to observe in Garden of Eden and come to know what is the meaning of, uh, you see, sin and sickness uh, and sorrow and death. Uh. But unfortunately, you see, Adam did not have anybody and he was the first person. Hence, uh, that observation cannot be applied to him. But even though the observation is failure among mankind, it has been success among the angels. Let us read First Corinthians 4 9, brother. First Corinthians 4 9. Can somebody read? Go for brother. Sure, brother. First Corinthians 4, verse 9. For I I think that God had set forth all of the apostle last uh, as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Uh -huh. We are made a spectacle unto you see? Unto whom? Unto the world and the angels. Spectacle. The apostles uh, the angels are seeing mankind and are learning what is the meaning of sin, sickness, and death? There is no law among the angels. There is no penalty among the angels. But they can see man's experience with sin and learn from it. So, this third one, observation, is a failure for Adam. But yet, this is successful among the angels. Okay. Now, the fourth one is what? Experience. Dear brethren, Adam did not have experience with sin and death. If he had that experience, I'm sure he wouldn't have sin at all. So lack of experience, dear brethren. Therefore, when you attend the interview, what do they ask for? How much experience you have? Why? Because without experience, if you come, you will spoil the entire company. Therefore, experience is very important. And experience is such a thing that nobody can infuse into somebody else. Nobody can put it into somebody else. They have to go through it, experience it, and bring it out their brand. So, experience, nobody can put into somebody inside. Therefore, God knew that 
Adam is sinning and Adam sinned because of experience. Therefore, God permitted the civil sort. Adam may get experience here, but then not only Adam, you see, God also knew, but Adam generation also is imperfect. Okay? And they also don't have experience. If they don't have experience, then surely they will also sin. Therefore, what did God do? God permitted not only Adam, Adam generation into death. So they may also gain experience. Let us read, dear brethren, uh, Romans 5, 12 and 1 Corinthians 15, 22 and 23. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 you read. And Romans 5, 12, brother. Anybody? Romy, sister? Uh, where, therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. Ah, see, how did death enter into the world? Because of one man. And this passed upon the entire world because God knew that everybody going to sin because of lack of experience. So everybody are condemned in Adam. Therefore, First Corinthians 22, it says, no, as in Adam, all die. Everybody are dying in Adam. Okay? That is one more verse, Jeremiah 31, 29 and 30. Jeremiah 31st chapter, 29 and 30. Uh, anu, sister, can you read? Jeremiah 31, 29, and 30. Brother, you're there online? Jeremiah 31, 29, and 30. Hmm. In those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grapes, and the children teeth are set on edge, but everyone shall die for his one in quality. Every man that eaten the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. Hmm. See, what do you say? Others have eaten the sour grape. Children's teeth are set on the edge. Nobody will tell in thousand years. Since. Those who sin, only they will die. But today, how is it? Adam was the father who ate the sour grape in Garden of Eden. What has happened? Our teeth are set on the edge. We have received the penalty, dear brethren. Everybody are dying in Adam because Adam ate the forbidden fruit. And death penalty has come upon us. Dear brethren, okay. Now, why did not God forgive Adam? God could have forgiven Adam, no? It was his first mistake. Hmm? First mistake he has done. You see, why did not God forgive Adam? Tell me. Who can tell me? Why did not God forgive Adam? He could have forgiven, no? What? Only one fruit, no? There were so many fruits in uh, the tree. He could have told, okay, I forgive you. Jesus himself said, uh, huh? you should uh, forgive your brother seven times, 70. That means 490 times. Why did not God forgive Adam the first time? Tell me. Who can tell because, I think because God has already told him about everything and he is not being um, obeyed for what God word. Very good. Like, he is not giving the value. Very good. Sir. Very good. See, if God would have forgived Adam, you know what would have happened? Then Adam would have thought, correct, what Lucifer said, if you eat this fruit, you shall surely not die. And moreover, Imagine if God would have not punished Adam, tomorrow his children would have come. Eh? Uh, they will also commit uh, such type of un sin. And uh, you say, eh? they will also ask uh, God, God, eh? you have forgiven my father. Please uh, forgive my sin also. Eh? If God keeps on forgiving everybody's sin, where would be justice? Where would be the value for God? Therefore, God did not forgive Adam, but he was very strict in God's justice. Dear brethren, if God would have forgived, and everybody would have thought, and everybody would have 
realized uh, and uh, they would have thought and we would have got confirmed that uh, what Lucifer said was uh, true. And God is a liar. Therefore, God did not forgive him and punished him. Today, each and every grave is a proof that we are all dying in Adam. Okay. God permitted this evil because mankind did not have experience. Okay, fine. But what is the use now? Everybody is suffering and everybody is dying. So what is this effect? When will the blessings come? Dear brethren, see, whenever we purchase any you see, poisonous chemical, at the back of it, there is a diamond box that is put uh, like in this shape. And uh, there the chemical name of that poison or the chemical would have been written below there would be a chemical name for antidote. Now, what is the meaning of antidote? Antidote means uh, if somebody takes the poison, if you give this antidote automatically, that uh, poison won't work. It will nullify the effect of the poison. Dear Bhadran, uh, eh? dear Bhadran, the God, when he permitted in this world uh, evil, he had an antidote in his hand. And that antidote is our Lord Jesus Christ. He knew before laying the foundation for this uh, world that uh, Jesus has to die. He knew very well that Adam is going to sin to redeem them and the mankind. Jesus had to die. Read Revelation 13.8 with her. Read Revelation 13.8. Munna, sister, can you read? Munna, sister, can you read? Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Even before the earth foundation is laid, when both the morning stars sang together, God decided in his mind that he is going to sin and Jesus had to be given as a sacrifice. Therefore, God knew everything and had a beautiful plan. Therefore, we read in the Bible that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, when will this happen? You see, when will all these things happen, dear brethren? When will the good come? What is the name of the fruit which uh, Adam and Eve ate in the Garden of Eden? Can anybody tell me? The fruit of knowledge and evil. Good ah, and evil. The fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Through Adam, the entire mankind are tasting the evil portion, the evil experience of that one. But when Christ returns the second coming, he is going to rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. And then... All the dead people will come back in the resurrection on the same earth, in the same flesh and they're going to live. And in Christ, they're going to taste the good portion of the fruit and have good experience. Therefore, dear brethren, huh? now evil is permitted for a short time. When Jesus returns, this evil will be taken off good will be there. Let us read Psalms 30, verse 5. Psalms 30, verse 5. Uh, Gopal, brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Psalms 30, verse 5. Uh, For his anger endured but a more uh, but a moment in his favor in his life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. See, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for the night. What all sin, sufferings today are there in the world, it is compared to a night. Night of sickness. You see, but will the night stay forever? No, it will come, it will go off. When the morning comes. If the morning has to come, what has to come in the sky? The sun has to come. Who is the sun in the Bible? Malachi, third chapter, verses 1 to 4. Jesus is the son of righteousness. 
He shall arise with the healing in his wings uh, in the millennium, in this thousand year reign. Then uh, weeping uh, shall go away. You see, dear brethren, Christ uh, is going to wipe every tears from everybody's eyes. Uh, there shall be no more tears, no more pain, no more death. Revelation 21 4, brother. Anu, sister, can you read Revelation 21 4? Then God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither shall nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former, former thing I passed away. Mm, God shall wipe every tear from their eyes. How can God wipe uh, the tears of a, you see, a very grown-up uh, man? Small child's tears can be wiped away. You know, when will an elderly person cry? When he loses his favorite one in death. But once if he comes back in the resurrection, what will happen to him? The tears will be wiped away. There shall be no more death in his God kingdom. You see, Jesus went and preached to entire cities about this kingdom. You see, Matthew 9.35 Luke 4, 43. You see, Jesus preached about this kingdom. Read Matthew 9, 35, brother. Uh, who can read? Roman sister, can you read Matthew 9, 35? And Jesus went, up, went about all the cities and village, teaching in their, um, what was the word there, brother? Synagogues. And uh, preaching all, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Ah, you see, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You see, Jesus tells in Luke 4 43, for this purpose I am sent to preach the kingdom of God. Dear brethren, this is the kingdom. When it should be established, God's footstool shall be made beautiful like a garden of Eden. Isaiah 60 verse 13. Gopal brother, can you read Isaiah 60 verse 13? The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. I will make the place of my feet, place of my feet glorious. Dear brethren, huh? therefore God permitted evil. Now you tell me, now I'll ask you one question. Why did God first permit evil for 6,000 years? And what, why God is going to permit good for a thousand years later? Why? Why is going to permit evil first and then good later? Why? Why did God do like this one? Instead of permitting Evil first and good later, God could have permitted first good and later evil. But why did not God do that way? Why? Who can tell me the answer? If anybody can tell, please raise your hand so you can tell. For the experience? Yes, sister. Very good. See, if mankind doesn't have experience uh, with uh, evil, there is always a possibility that they might uh, sin. But if they have that experience with evil, definitely they won't sin. Dear brethren, that is the reason that God first permitted evil. Because if they experience evil, definitely at any cost of time, they won't uh, choose back evil. That is the reason. First God permitted evil and later good. I'll give you an example. Like for example, you see, cigarette smoking. Is it injurious to health or not? If you see, it is injurious to health. Okay? Some people have that intuition that we should not smoke. But they don't smoke. Okay? So for, for some people, intuition is good. But for some people, advice is good. But for some people, even advice doesn't work. Some people will tell, oh, my grandfather is smoking from so 80 years. Nothing has happened to him. They tell, no. Huh? 
each and every cigarette pack they would have put a photo uh, cigarette is uh, you see injurious to health but how many people will take that advice nobody then observation some people observe the people who are suffering from uh, tuberculosis and cancer some people will learn yo i don't want to pa all these things sir. but some people even observation doesn't work uh, but imagine if they undergo the experience uh, of cancer and tb and uh, the tumor for all those things are removed the painful radiation and chemotherapy and all you see and after all these things uh, if he is cured 100% uh, from cancer if you go and give him uh, one crore rupee and tell him to smoke just one cigarette will he smoke will he smoke no why because he has had that experience with suffering he has got that experience with cancer so he doesn't want to cigarette doesn't want to smoke a cigarette at any cost to him why because he knows that value of life that is experienced to him therefore god permitted first he will then god is going to permit a good once uh, everybody has experience with evil then good comes in what will happen automatically automatically they will choose good over evil now what all points we study today it is given in only one verse romans 8 20 and 21 joel brother can you read romans 8 20 and 21 for the for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subject the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glories liberally of the children of god ah for the creature was made subject to vanity 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 it comes in ecclesiastes no prasangi huh ecclesiastes solomon it tells everything is vanity 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 that means experience god made the world to experience why not willingly god did not want tell you i want to do it i want to them to have you will know but with the reason of him who has subjected the same in hope he had permitted evil in a hope that they will gain experience and come back to me and live obedient to me therefore it says because the world the creature the mankind itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption from death into the glorious liberty of the children of god when lord's kingdom they brethren therefore why god permitted evil if you see because of lack of experience god wanted mankind to gain experience so that after getting the experience with evil when good is given compare it and choose good if you dear brethren please go through the notes and please go through the recording brother gopal also will repeat the class in nepali on saturday any doubts any questions you have you can definitely ask 